Hi, and welcome back, and thanks for watching the uh, part two of my uh, design demo for Steampunk. Uh, I'm with Roger with Steampunked Out, and today we're going to talk a little bit about layout, uh, getting everything organized. Now that we've gone through the concept phase and decided exactly what we're going to build. Um, for the demo purposes, I decided to go ahead and do a science class bracer with uh, full LED lights built into it. So we'll have a lot of different options to play with there for um, you know different design elements and layout, and um, you really kind of get a, a lot of complication there. So um, it'll give me a, something to really talk about the different parts. Um, one of the things that you've got to decide once you decide what you're going to build, you know, uh, what the concept is and all that, is you have to arrange all of the, uh, the get all, all the things that you want to put on there and get them together and start deciding, you know, what, is, what makes sense to put on this item. So the science class bracers usually do one of two things. They'll either um, like receive or take sensor readings of some type and give you a readout. Uh, or they're going to be some sort of a, not necessarily weapon, but a projector of some type, whether it's a disruptor or uh, I did one that was uh, an ether disruptor, yeah. you, know, well, you know, whatever crazy science fiction fantasy thing that you can come up with, that's great, go for it. Um, this one, I'm actually going to incorporate a gauge in it that's going to be... Uh, Talk, it's going to take readings on the composition of things, and instead of doing um, some of the commercial, you know, especially looking at some of the, the old gauges and stuff like that, that you can find in, uh, you know, antique shops and stuff like that. Number one, they, they seem to be fairly costly. You know, one of the problems that we, we deal with in steampunk is a lot of times we want to get antiques and stuff, and they look great, but then you want to tear them up and use them for something else, and sometimes they're worth quite a bit of money as they are. Uh, so, you know, thrift stores and junk stores are great, but you don't necessarily get the, some of the things that you want, so let's just make it. So basically what I've got here is a clock fit up, um, that, and I've made my own gauge faces here. I don't have any uh, needles, so I'm actually going to go ahead and build a, a readout needle for this and get it mounted on a, you know, a little pin and put it in here. And this one won't actually, the gauge will not physically work, it won't be tied to anything, but it'll provide a nice illusion that, you know, that the gauge is pointing to something. Um, you know, on there, and the lights will give the illusion of, of something actually working. And you know, again, it's not necessarily you know to make an actual gun that fires. We just want the illusion of a Gatling gun. So you don't really want that. And I think it's a, that's you know a lot of a, you know when you're doing cosplay stuff, we want just the illusion. So I'm going to build that into it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put three different kinds of LEDs in here. Uh, I've uh, decided to do the LEDs. Uh, you have to have some sort of a power source for that. Um, this is a, a little box that contains a, a three volt battery or a AAA batteries that uh, you get three volts out of them. You put two of them in. Um, so I've chosen um, uh, LEDs that will work with that voltage. Um, anytime that you're doing LEDs, you do have to use some sort of a resistor with them. So if you don't know anything about electronics or whatever, LEDs are not terribly difficult to figure out. There's some tutorials on there and doing really simple LED wiring, especially if you're going to make something to sell. You don't want to put a you know, battery on this thing that's going to burn out in a week. So, bad idea. So, always make sure that you're going to do that uh, properly. And I've chosen to use a, a little red LED. I've also got a, um, a blinking red LED that I'm going to put on here. Um, and then I also have a green LED that I want to put on here. Uh, and the green LED, I actually want to put so that, uh, you know, again, we're going, I'm going back to the idea of using the glim. And uh, this one, I want to try to get the glowing effect of the glim. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the green LED inside here, and I've got a uh, little vial that's filled with a little glass vial that's filled with a green liquid that I've made, <clears throat> so that whenever uh, the green LED is on, it kind of lights that up a little bit and kind of gives it a little bit of a glowing effect. So it's really hard to see under the lights here, but I think it'll be uh, worthwhile to do. Uh, also, anytime that you're going to work modern day things in, you know, like the battery pack and the LEDs and stuff like that. Um, my personal opinion is, is that it's really important to hide that, otherwise you're just sticking some gears on it and calling it steampunk. Um, we want this to look like it's from the right period, uh, whether we're incorporating modern day items or not, um, you know, my personal feel is that you should try to make it look uh, as though it could have been made during the, during the time period we're talking about. So, 
for the LEDs and stuff, I really like to hide those. Uh, uh, also, I'll be incorporating in, I think this is one of my favorite things to put in, is this little CO2 canister that I've cleaned up. Uh, a lot of times they come with some sort of a paint or powder coat, coat on them. And they're kind of a pain to, you know, to clean out and stuff like that. But, I, you know, get it down to the bare metal. Uh, and then you can use some different antiquing techniques on the steel if you want. This one is the same thing. I've just cut a piece of it off. Um, got a you know piece out of old clock uh, that I think just look make uh, like a little neat array here when you put them together. And I thought, oh, this is gonna you know this is gonna be a great little sensor of some type. You know, I can you know add this right onto some tubing or something like that. Uh, you know, and then you know incorporate that on. I'm also gonna incorporate lots of uh, of different tubing and stuff. Now I use the tubing for two different things. Um, everything on here really needs to have a purpose. You know what you know fictitious purpose at the very least. So that you know you're not just jamming stuff on there for no reason. Um, the tubing I'll use for either um, connecting power sources uh, and showing some sort of a transfer or flow of energy. Um, the other thing I use it for is um, obviously it'll still look like it's connecting things up, but I actually will be connecting things with it because I'll run wiring and stuff in here, and that'll uh, you know help me hide the wires um, so that you know I don't have the modern day plastic cover, you know, insulated wires running through. Now that you figure out exactly what parts that you have that you want to incorporate in there, um, you really have to decide how you want to arrange those parts. So, you know, what makes sense? You know, if I'm going to have a sensor on here, uh, it probably needs to be in an area on the bracer that you can take readings from. So, you know, putting it up here might not necessarily make sense, pointing the wrong way. Probably want it closer down here to the front so that I can, you know, point it at whatever I want to do, you know, a sensor or, you know, what have you. We've got to decide where we're going to lay it out, uh, you know, how we're going to set this up and what makes sense in the composition itself. So uh, right now I need to go ahead and cut the bracer itself out, the leather pieces for it, so that we can start kind of laying some of these pieces on there and getting a feel for exactly, uh, exactly how everything is going to work and move and the, uh, what it's going to do. So I'm going to cut that out and I'll be back in just a few minutes with that. Alright, welcome back. Uh, now we're going to work on the next part. I've got the leather cut out here. Uh, this is a bracer template that I use for a lot of, uh, a lot of different things. Um, I actually just I have these uh, little uh, templates that I make out of uh, illustration boards. This one I, I've got uh, the leather cut out and I don't have the edges finished or anything. When we get into execution we'll talk a little bit more about some of the more professional things to do with the leather craft itself. Um, right now, we can actually start laying out some of the elements uh, on, on the base of the bracer here so that we know exactly kind of where we're going with our design. Now, one thing that you have to make sure, whatever your design is, is, is remember that you're designing something in the three-dimensional realm. And this bracer is not going to be flat. So this is actually going to curve around the arm. But once you get a curve to this, you only have a small amount of area on the top. So you're only looking at maybe three inches or so on the average that is going to be not completely flat, but a little bit less rounded than the rest of it when we're talking about the, you know, this part of the arm that this is going to go on. So keep that in mind when you're doing your design work. One of the tough things to do, know about this is that you know, a lot of this stuff is non-flexible and you're putting it on a flexible surface. So your material, keep an idea of what materials you have is important in your design work as well. Um, what I'm primarily going to do with this, though, I think, is obviously I need the sensor, um, you know, up front of some type. Um, so I know I'm going to put that up here. And I'm going to put the power box somewhere in the back here, probably with some sort of a switch or something. And I think what I want to do on this, on this power box is I actually want to, well, this is going to be, um, you know, the inner workings that you can't see. Obviously, it's just a battery pack, but it's going to appear to be, um, a, an area where you know there's some sort of a strange and unusual mechanical mystical thing going on the inside and I'm actually going to mount my um, readout right on top of that for my composition and what I've decided this is going to be is uh, another uh, tip of the hat to Devin Monk and this is going to be a strange detector and so on my composition it's going to tell you know what kind of strange you know that that's going to be and it's going to give a readout on the color you know whether it's you know there's no strange at all or maybe this is a ghost you know whatever the case may be you know you can you can let your imagination go wild honestly the purchaser is going to have their own ideas of what it wants to be but you know I just want to lay down the basis and allow them you know they can make it be whatever they want but my intent is that it's a detector of some type 
um, you know, to be determined ultimately by the purchaser, but what I have in mind is a detector of, of uh, what they call a strange in the books. Um, so I'm going to have my detector here, my readout here. Uh, I want to have my power source uh, run right through the glim. So I'm probably going to incorporate my LED on this side right here inside of the tube. And I want to run those, I think, in parallel with my other two lights. So I'll have a red light and a blinking red light. And these two tubes are going to connect into this box. All three are going to converge at the front here in some way. And then the, the sensor itself is going to be connected to that. So it's going to have the illusion of, okay, here's a power source. Um, we know that you know, you're going to get input here in the detector. And it's going to run through the different, uh, different lines here with the different indicators and stuff like that. And into the inner workings of the device and ultimately give you some sort of readout. How that actually works again is totally science fiction, and we, you know, we have the semblance of a working item. It's really important to set this up when we do this. We do want to pay attention to how things are aligned for one. Um, you know, like I said, I'm going to put these in parallel. We're going to decide what's parallel. Parallel to what? These are going to be parallel to each other, but you know, obviously, you know, for the for the sake of design, you know, you may not want these going at some sort of strange angle that doesn't make sense. We know that the general movement is going to be along the arm. Uh, it's possible to sometimes do things like this for a bracer where things might go perpendicular. But, you know, strange angles that don't make sense, you, you know, those are things that you want to consider in your composition. You also want to balance things. You don't want too much going on in an area. Um, you know, if, if this thing was completely covered all the way around, you know, it gets to the point where you, you're starting to look like a, a Borg or something from Star Trek. and you know, which could be cool. I would love to see a steampunk board. That would be awesome. Um, but again, all the little devices and bits and pieces on the board a lot of times, unless you really sit there and look and study each one, you know, it gets lost. So this is going to be a showpiece for somebody. Something like this that's, you know, uh, takes so long to build and costs uh, a lot of money and time and resources. Uh, you know, when they purchase it, you know, they're going to put an investment to it. This is going to be a showpiece. So let's make it a showpiece and, you know, make it be a focal point and not get lost in the design work. So setting up the balance and the symmetry, uh, and when I say symmetry, I, doesn't, I don't mean that it necessarily has to be perfectly symmetrical. Your designs you know, can definitely be asymmetrical, and that's great. You know, that's where balance comes in. You, have, you, know, you don't want to have all your devices over here in one section, and then this is all bare. You want to kind of use the space that you have without making it crowded, but you know, allow the eye to move and, you know, and see how things work um, with, within uh, what makes sense. But, you know, the, when I talk about symmetry, one of the things to think about, though, too, is whether it's asymmetrical or what with your design, there are things on here that are going to be symmetrical or whatever. One of the things specifically that I can tell you right now is the leather itself has to be, you know, the, I've made this a symmetrical design. Now, if it's supposed to be symmetrical, make it that way. Don't cut this angle a little bit off or something like that. Make sure that your pattern, if it's meant to be symmetrical, is because, uh, you know, you could definitely tell uh, a work, you know, how unprofessional work is by the lack of symmetry in areas where it's supposed to be symmetrical. So, all right, so I'm going to start uh, working on getting this together for you, and then we'll start looking at some of the different parts of the execution uh, on the next video. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you leave some comments or if you have questions about any of the stuff I'm using or how to do it or, or what I'm talking about, uh, you know, I'm happy to answer questions. So please put that on there and uh, thanks a lot. See you next time.